Hey, family, your nephew, Willie Moore Jr., the one who always gives you family-friendly entertainment, is here to say that this conversation requires you to be 18 years of age. It's a conversation that needed to be had with the one and only Larry Reed. Let's go. Like COVID wiped out a lot of great ministries who are attempting to build back. That's when I made my first million in 45 days. You made a million dollars in 45 make, I, days? And I will generate it every 45 days. A million. A million. A, a million dollars so COVID every 45 for, COVID days. for me changed my life. Love you more, love you more, love you more. Family, listen, your nephew Willie Moore Jr., welcome to another amazing Love You More show, okay? Of course, I would love to call it a podcast, but who knows where this thing is going to go. Um, I know you watched last week's episode, um, and shout out to everybody, all the people who are on Patreon who decided to like really give to the opportunity. Make sure you do me a favor. Make sure you subscribe to this channel uh, because it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really, really great ride, all right? And so today, I'm sitting down with a guy who I really honor and respect, right? Um, I won't lie to you. I remember I was about to go on his show. And they was like, you about to go where? I was like, man, I'm about to go see this guy, uh, Larry Reed. And they were like, man, you know how he is or this, that, another. And so y'all know I'm from the neighborhood. And I was just like, well, nah, we ain't going to get that. And I was like, if he if he do something to me, then it's on. Then I walked in, he was like 6'2". And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to need backup because I can't whoop him, right? Uh, but the one and only Larry Reed is going to hang out with me today. And I'm so thankful. And we're going to have a really good candid conversation. The one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Reed. What up, champ? What's up, man? Man, listen, just glad that you're here, number one. Um, the Love You More series is really designed because I realized throughout my life, mm. my career, I fell in love with the lights. I fell in love with being mm. a father. I fell in love with being a husband. I fell in love with being a great friend. But somewhere along the way, like I lost the love for myself. Mm. And so my goal with the Love You More series is more so just to let people know, like, it's okay to love yourself. Yeah. You know, the Bible declares that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Mm. And I feel like sometimes people do not love themselves. I know you ain't get a chance to watch the Love You More series, but it's a video that I want you to see because I know you're a former musician. Okay. Are you still doing music I too? I still do music. I am a style. All right, cool. Well, yeah. I'm going to let you check out this video. You okay. let me know musically what you think. But there's a part in it that I gotta ask you about too. Okay, Check cool. this out. All right. Love you more. Love you more. Wait, take that route. <laughs> so, so the scene there, like just, just to give you a little preface, initially we go to counseling. Yeah. So we have been going through a whole, whole lot. It's a record called Clockwork. Mm -hmm. And then finally, counseling is actually good for us. So we ended up, you know, mm -hmm. playing a little basketball, poking and laying up. Yeah. And then I ended up going to work. And what happens is, it's something about that job when you have a dream, yeah. but, but then you still got a job. Mm -hmm. Has Larry Reed ever had a job? Have I ever had like a job? Like job, job, like when I was a white child. boss. When I was a child. So you've always been an entrepreneur? <laughs> That's from 17. Yeah. I left my parents' home at 17 years old. And I was working a regular job prior to that. Okay. But it was always in conjunction to what it is that I was gifted to do. So I was a church drummer, organist, choir director, taught voice. Mm -hmm. So that was my main thing. Okay. And then I had to get a job on the side just so my daddy won't feel like I'm being lazy. You know, I have a regular job. So I worked at Hardee's, Arby's, Shoe Show, manager there, hotel, went to all these different places. Yeah. But when I left at 17 years old, I just focused on what it is I could do. And at that time was be a church musician and train the choirs. And then I got into preaching and then started mm -hmm. pastoring. So that's. So you like traditional pastor? Yeah, that. traditional pastor for 20 years. I stopped that in 2017. So like. On yeah. the circuit, pastor. Yeah, and preaching and books and preaching that country, that state. I mean, that was what I did. An itinerant minister. And then had a pa a, been a pastor of one main church. But mm -hmm. there were other churches that I had to fly to and preach at, you know, that was in my organization. Yeah. So what was that? So hanging out with Larry Reed. So what was, 
Like that's a totally difference. Like from like <laughs> I see the Larry, the, Larry, the Larry Reed who be like, if you fucking, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, to to this guy. So was your father a pastor? Was mama a pastor? Like I wanted to really kind of know, like yeah, Larry. Reed. My, my parents are pastors, but yeah. when I was coming up, they weren't. It was okay. just my mom and them. My mama singing with her sisters, a female quartet group out of mm-hmm. North Carolina called the Fleming Sisters. Okay, and so that's what they done all my growing up. Yeah. And then my father. He was a drug addict, you know, then later on he got saved mm-hmm. and then he started preaching and pastoring. And so I saw all of that, that range happen as it relates to my parents. And that's how I was raised. And then all of her sisters, mm-hmm. they speak in tongues, prophesy, mm-hmm. and all of her first cousins, they all preachers, you know, so my, that's where I come from. But then my daddy's side, the brothers, you know, that. A little different. It ain't a little different. They're a little different. But my mama's yeah. side, the spiritual side. But I was raised in that my entire life. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you you're in this thing and you're doing your thing. Were you profitable in it, or were you like a storefront dude who just wasn't really necessarily? Getting started it? out storefront. Okay. Um, now, and no disrespect to nobody who started the storefront. Yeah, front, it ain't But after wrong. twenty years, yeah, you know, like no. sometimes you want to expand <laughs> your brand. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with. with starting out or being storefront. Right. I mean, there's a ministry in that too, but I knew I was called to more. Yeah. And so that's how it started. Okay. But when I switched from traditional pastor and the church was doing very well, Yeah. but I just knew that I was called to do something else. And it was at, you know, um, Dr. Holly Carter. Yes. And Dion Franklin. Mm-hmm. And who else came? Robbie. Yeah. She was there. And there was somebody else that was there significant. She had this thing called the Merge Summit. Yeah, yeah, I remember and that. And so I went to the In LA. One. Yeah. Yep. I didn't go to that one, though. No, okay. That was too far. No, I didn't. No, because it didn't have the Stellas. That was Vegas. Vegas, yeah. So I went to that one. Okay. But the one that I heard the Spirit say, move to Atlanta. That was in 2015. Okay. Now, mind you, I'm pastor in North Carolina. So that was June or July. Yeah. And it was the day after the last Bobby Jones gospel taping because we had performed there for the last one, the very last one. Okay. And then I drove back home and then I heard about the summit and I got in the car and drove her back and went to her event. And so when I went there, that's when I got that call to go into entertainment and move to Atlanta, yeah. which made no sense. Don't like the heat. Don't like the South. Oh, you don't like to say yeah, No, I, I didn't. So it was, mm-hmm. I did not. And I only came to Atlanta to perform. I came to that uh, station 54, the one where everybody goes sing at. Yeah, yeah. That, that TV show. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, uh, at the local go joint. Yeah, the yeah. Atlanta so 54 I, I went there yeah. I was pushing the single. I was pushing that single. I even came and sat down with um, Darlene one okay. time. And I went everywhere. All the radio one. Do, what do every gospel music. artist do. Yeah. You know, but I just, I, I was not foreseeing what happened? Yeah, I just knew what I heard was yeah. a move to Atlanta and get into the entertainment industry. So is yeah. that like an audible voice, or is it just like something on the inside? Well, like, so di- so here's the thing: like I understand the voice, but I want to make sure yeah, that they understand it. So so even when so I was pretty willy, and I'm doing these shows. Mm-hmm. And one night, I am just got off the House of Blues. DJ Quick opened up for him. Game mm-hmm. there. I looked down. It's this little 15-year-old dude that just came out. He was in a Rolls Royce. And I said, hey, Chris. <laughs> and it just so happened to be Chris Brown because oh, he was wow. a kid. And I just remember the voice saying, your way or my way. And it was wow. like a shocker to me. So what was the voice like for you that kind of told you? Because things seemingly are doing good. Well, you know, I, I, I'm used to hearing the voice of the Lord. So... At that particular time, it was his his voice. Mm-hmm. If I will break it down, if anybody was like, I don't know if this voice is the Lord or what. Mm-hmm. For me, in the beginning, the voice of the Lord sounded like the authorities in my life that represented okay. God. Mm-hmm. So when I first began to hear the voice of the Lord, it would sound like mom, sound like dad, sound like my bishop, L.L. Stevenson. It would mm-hmm. sound like Reverend Odell Fultz, my mom and them pastor that I was listening to growing mm-hmm. up. It sounded like them. Mm-hmm. Then as time went along, it began to sound like a very adult me, like somebody, like I had grown up and became very elevated and mm. that voice was speaking to me for in the future and mm. telling me what was the will of God. So wow. that still is typically the voice that I hear, mm. but then sometimes it is totally, <laughs> totally different than anything I could imagine. Yeah. But in that moment, it sounded like me from the future yeah. that was saying, you need to get your ass up and go and move to Atlanta right now because you are about to come to the to the peak where you at, and yeah. you got to grow some more. Jeez. Yeah, that was in 2015, June. In August, I was in Atlanta. August the 27, 2015. What happened to the people that were supporting you in the ministry? I was still going back and forth. I didn't move to church. 
I just moved, <laughs> you you I just, double dip. Yeah, I just moved to Atlanta. Okay, and then drove back and forth every single Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday. So when you had, so what did it look like? What did it look like for Larry when you had to make the hard decision? It was hard. I mean, hard is hard. I yeah. mean, it, it was real hard. Um, cause we were doing very well, mm -hmm. and I was just gonna continue to drive back and forth. And I was in service at the time I was married. Lisa was sitting beside me and was in worship like normal. And I've always had a real strong online presence, mm -hmm. which basically began in 2003. So when I began to get this, this, this leading to move to Atlanta in that service, I got a picture of all of that time being online. Mm -hmm. And the spirit said, take all of this and put it online. Wow. I said, no, how, do, how do I do that? Put so, a whole so, so church did you, online. Did you know like computers and all of that? Yeah, stuff? I, I mean, we've okay. we, we done live streaming. We had okay, email cool, members. Cool, cool. So we had that duality that yeah. most churches were forced to do in 2020. Yeah. But it said, put it, put it online. And I just started trying to figure it out. So I started doing worship, prophecy, because my church was big on prophecy, personal prophecy, my soul seed prophecy I told. Okay. And all of that online. Yeah. November 2015 is when we started. And I shut down the church. The physical building. The physical building. Okay. And I had an unction. 2020, the church is going to change forever. So I started telling my show, Larry Live, started as talking about the church is going to change in 2020 and everybody needs to build this is online. This is 2015, November. You tell them it's still online. Time. Yeah, it's still online. So when my show first started, the only thing I talked about was getting out of the four walls of the church, graduating, it was my exact word, graduating the four wall experience mm. and for churches to begin to build a presence online by 2020. So that was how the Larry Live Show started. Jeez. And then as I started talking, the comment section were asking me questions about what had happened. Mm. And so then I would look on the news and see what happened, and I would talk about it. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, anything that that blogger, um, the Kojic light skin dude. Yes, anything that what he- What his name was? Obnoxious. Mr. Yeah. Obnoxious, okay. Anything he would put out, I would just talk about it. And then anything any other, any person put out, I would just talk about it and say whatever I felt concerning it. Yeah. And then it just grew. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just got crazy. I'm like, wow, how, how did this happen? We've done it for the first- Two years, 15, 16, 17, because uh -huh. my ex-wife, my former assistant, were all on my show with me. It was three of us. Oh, so you had like co-hosts and everything. Yeah, I okay. started out talking. They would just feed questions. Um, Vincent would feed questions. Okay. And then I brought my ex-wife on, and this became a three-part show. Yeah. But then in March of 2018, he was the last to leave. My ex-wife, of course, we divorced. Uh -huh. And then she went her way and married somebody else. And then, and then I know she married someone. Yeah, she married someone. When 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 you done the interview at the house. Oh, that was you was like, tell them about what you did with the uh, living. Right. <laughs> yeah, because she she divorced, yeah. got with somebody else, took the kids. Mm -hmm. That busted up. She sent the kids back and then lived a single life for a year before she came back to help me with the jerk. Wow. Yeah, that's what she did. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when she showed when, she, when you came there, everything was peachy. Yeah. But it, that ain't how it was. She ain't come back to June 2020. Yeah. So yeah. do you think that you took her back because there was something on the inside of you that didn't necessarily love Larry the way he should have? Because you're like a totally different guy now. Like, why were you so graceful for a person who made a decision? You know, now how real you want me to be? Okay, bro, I'm going to tell you. Safe, like the 100. reality is this. That church thing get deep, deep down in you. And my parents are like 40-something years married. Everybody in my family, you do not divorce. Yes. And I really think even sitting right here in the chair, I still on some level believe that and it's in me. Yeah. So I'm done with marriage. That's that's how I feel. It would have to be an act of God <laughs> so, for me so to get married again. married again. I don't think I'm just going to be freaking <laughs> <laughs> in a very selective <laughs> way when that time comes again. Yeah. I have a dollar amount I got to get to. And then after that, then I'm going to think about having a partner after that. But yeah, right. I'm right now. I'm mm, I'm done. Mm -mm. I ain't so, splitting up with nobody, and so, I ain't living in a bedroom with nobody sharing no bathroom, no toilets. I'm done. Gee, so here's here's the thing. Like, I appreciate you being really, really mm -hmm. honest about that. But because it's the love you more piece, like what I've learned, kind of going through my process in divorce. Like when I look back, like I 
I allowed so much because just like you, like I was adopted. I mean, mm. not that you were adopted, but I was adopted. I seen two people like work mm. it out. They've been married for 50 years. I had never like even seen an argument that didn't end with like, well, F you, fuck you. And, and then they'd be like, okay, cool. Let's watch TV. Like I, and nothing was really drawn out. Like I had never seen anything mm. like this. Not necessarily like people who were in church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We yeah. went on Sunday sometimes. You know, no, and then, like you know, I didn't I didn't grow up that way. And so I realized that I had this beautiful picture in my head of what I thought marriage should be. And I was willing to do whatever it took to make sure that everybody was just OK. Mm -hmm. But when I look back at it through like therapy and counseling, I was like, man, I might not necessarily have loved myself to be able to endure some of the things that I had to, to endure. answer your question. Yes, that is true. I took. Not just her back, <laughs> yeah. but I took a whole community back because, mind you, when I started doing the Larry Live show, I was a traditional pastor. I didn't have no tattoos, didn't have no earring. They had my. I got to see them pictures. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> y'all put the picture on the screen. You know, I was real <laughs> traditional. You know, did you hoop too? Yeah, I mean, I, still, I know he's all right. I still preach, okay. you know, and I still pastor, but not that way. Okay, you know, so. It was it was hard for everybody to adjust. Yeah. Although I had been talking about going outside the four walls of church for the last ten years, a pastor and traditionally, yeah. but the niggas won't listen. Yeah, you know. So when I did it, like, oh my god, what pastor doing? And so like everybody got real crazy, you know. So I was basically left on my own and to fend for myself, even yeah. people that I had helped and given my blood to, you know. So yeah. I was found myself in an apartment with one of the members still living with me. And I had a moving white chick in my room. Well, not my room. And well, it was my room in the other side of the apartment mm -hmm. to split the bills. My Mercedes was repoed, you know. Wow. So I like came all the way down. It may not be rock bottom to everybody listening to us, but it was rock bottom but for me. you. Yeah, 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 no doubt. And I was by myself, yeah. you know. So, and I had this Larry Live show. I mean, people were watching online, but, you know, I was Ubering. This is 2018. I was Ubering, substitute teaching, and doing Larry Live. And I was doing Larry Live. My feet was on my bed because my bed was not in my room. It was the floor. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you you sitting there. What does the vision look like? So I remember you told me a little story about kind of what you had to do while God was downloading the entire vision. Yeah. But I was mm. in the mansion. That wasn't the place where it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it, my, Larry Live Show started uh, to take its form as far as with me on my own, March of 2018 at Amley Buckhead Apartments. Amley Buckhead Apartments. Yeah, that's that's where it started. Yeah. And it was three of us living at the spill of the bills. Um, the white chick name was Lisa, but not my Lisa. Okay. And Kendall and me. And so with a split up, split up. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just knew how to birth out something out of the spirit. I mean, because you've been working the years in the church as a prophet, you know how to deal with spiritual things. Yeah. So I said I need to trigger my my brain and my spiritual brain mm -hmm. with pictures. So I put my emblem all over my room. The Larry Reed Lilo. Yes, and I put Atlanta, New York, L.A. I put a picture of, of a condo, a huge mansion. Um. Uh, Mercedes Maybach and another car I had up there. But I probably the it. one you got. So probably the Rolls Royce. <laughs> no, it wasn't was that, one. Was that one hadn't came out yet. No, no, it hadn't. <laughs> that's the color that hadn't came out yet. Yeah. But uh, but I did get the Maybach, but you I did? sold it. Yeah. yeah. But all of that, and it was all around. And I would just look at it every single day. I mean, that's I couldn't go anywhere in my room area and not see the Larry Live logo and everything that I was hoping to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I stopped doing substituting and driving Uber the wow. last week of May of 2018. Yeah. And I said, I'm just going to do this Larry Live thing. I see how many shows it takes for me to get a $400 check a month. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to double that. And I'm going to double it on Facebook. I was monetized. Mm -hmm. And that'll cover my part of the rent. And I'm just going to do the show every single day. And that's what I do. I done it every single day until November 2020. So when did this like when did it switch? So, you know, just kind of fast forward in the story just a little mm -hmm. bit. Cause I never knew. You know, I I can't I met Larry Reed from somebody else. <laughs> it was just like, 
Everybody kept saying, because you know if Larry Reed get it, that nigga <laughs> passed the worst nightmare. I was like, what? Like, who is Larry Reed? Well, it's what's funny, though, I never broke a story. Yeah. I have never broke a story. I but you, always yeah. talk about what somebody else is always already talking about. But yeah. I get the credit for being this big, oh my God. You know, but yeah. that wasn't the case. the hand of the Lord, though. Yeah, you know, but yeah. I didn't realize that that was the the case. Yeah. Because if you working like that, your head is down working. Exactly. I'm barely going to the mall. You know, so it wasn't until I, I ain't come out the house really until about November 2020. Mm -hmm. I started like going to see, and that's when I was like, Okay, now this is really a big deal because yeah. I can't go nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I get stopped. Yeah. You know, but it wasn't that that wasn't what I was I can't say that's what I was going for. I just wanted to make impact and I wanted people to talk about the stuff they ain't talking about that they need to be talking about. That did, was so my did goal. I always feel like that as a pastor, like sometimes like, why do I have to be so polished? Why do I have to be so clean? Why why isn't it like why isn't it not that it's that part is fake, but mm -hmm. there's so many different layers. I often say people are onions. And so yeah. there's many layers to them. Well, you know, for me, I'm, I'm not going to call it fake, but to me it is. So I never was that as a pastor. My my members knew the Larry Live Y'all meeting now. They would get that on Wednesday nights. So, so it's like Bible study. Yes. Yeah. So they, they were, and sometimes in pulpit on Sunday because I'm me all the time. Yeah. But they would get that. They understood that. Mm -hmm. But the world, mm -hmm. the videos I was putting out there was just of me prophesying, casting out demons, you know, that kind of. So that's the only thing they knew. Mm -hmm. Apostle Reed for. They did not know me. Yeah. And so when I began to talk on the show, it was like, what in the hell has happened? What? Where did I talk is bad about you? What? I know you didn't get I'm no a, invites. Oh, I ain't need them. I never needed that. Cause I was always, and I'm not boasting, but it's the truth. I had systems are very important. Okay. And so I always have operated in a system that was self-sustaining. So as 20 years as a traditional pastor, when I mean, you hear there's certain gospel artists that came to my church and I wrote them a check, we didn't have to raise a dime because I understand systems and how to get people to perform to the peak of their performance. So you're talking about 150 people in the, in the mother church who was able to do a $40,000 month budget. You know, that that was that's how I always operated. So mm -hmm. I brought all of my business sense to social media. So when people who were making fifty thousand dollars with a million subscribers, I was doing fifty thousand dollars with thirty thousand. More Love You More podcast after this. Boy here, I'm 18 years old and I know as a preteen and as a teenager, a lot of us be going through the same issues together. So as this mentorship, I want to make sure that we all can be a family together and come together as a community and make sure that we can all solve our issues with each other. We're going to laugh, we're going to cry, we're going to do it all together. So make sure you sign up today. Love you more, love you more, love you more. Now back to the Love You More podcast. That's how I always operated. So mm -hmm. I brought all of my business sense to social media. So when people who were making $50,000 with a million subscribers, I was doing $50,000 with 30,000, you know, cause I understood how to get it done. Yeah. And that's how I was able to get where I am now because I just used my common sense. How so, do you get that done? How did I get it? Like, how do you, like, and I know we, we turned a little bit, shout out to everybody watching. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause it's a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. like for me, you know, I might've had a goal for 25,000, 30,000. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, well, we ain't gotta be as consistent there. Cause I can go on the road and do boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So if we get down to it, like what is the, what is, what systematically helped you as a ministry? Cause it like COVID wiped out a lot of great ministries who are attempting to build back. That's when I made my first million in 45 days. You made a million dollars and in I will 45 make, I, days. I will generate it every 45 days. A million, a million, a, a million. million dollars so COVID, every 45 for, COVID days. for me changed my life. A million dollars every 45 Every 45 days. days. It's true. Yes. So partnership is everybody's. <laughs> any entrepreneur think partner. Do not think customer. Always think partner. Yes, sir. And so when you're on social media, you're there to create partnership. The engagement should lead to partnership. The viewer, you have to take it from a viewer to a partner. And once, once you do that, by just really working the engagement, that person, every person I meet and I generate uh, a relationship with, 
I'm going to be extremely resourceful to them and they're going to be extremely resourceful to me. Mm -hmm. And that partnership just caused both of us to become more and more wealthy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And and so when... That's the key. That's a jewel right there. It's the key. I feel like I need my bill. (laughs) It's it's, it's to create partnership. And once you meet somebody's need, they're going to help you meet meet yours. It just... It's just a, it's change over and over. Have you ever so does so? Hey, that's on my bill. Thank like, y'all. Y'all can come in too. It don't matter. We cool. This ain't this ain't that. This two friends having a conversation because uh, don't nobody get to meet this the business guy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so here's the thing. Um, when I was when when I first came over, like I didn't know, like I didn't know mm. what it was. I'm just fearless, so I don't yeah. know. Like I'm just like yo, like I'm always looking for the mm. next opportunity to connect with somebody, and like my children. That, that was my road dog. So we rolling. Mm. And it was like, yo, I really like Larry. I like mm. the family. I like, can we come back? And <laughs> yeah, it was almost yeah, like yeah, a family yeah, union. First was. time. Like, it yeah. was like, take them kids up there. And Larry yeah. had them over there. Yeah. And we was having fun doing all of that. And I was like, Yeah, wow, my children like, have asked about your children, actually. Yeah, yeah, like it was like something very mm. unique. Um, I do got I do gotta know this. Cause I watch how you do certain people. Mm. Um, one of which, um, I was gonna call you and be like, man, I don't even worry about that part. Cause I don't like this particular guy. So it's this dude in New York. <laughs> oh, I know he's. Yeah, okay. and I was just like, "Come on, man, you ain't really about that pedigree." So does like what has been the worst like threat or like do you get death threats and all that other stuff being so like in the forefront of almost kind of the I'm most reckless. Say, stuff? I'm gonna say something, and it's gonna irritate some preachers. Yeah, um, they're all punks. Wow. Every last. <laughs> So what ain't nobody never stepped to you. Hell no! What they gonna do? You gonna be bulletproof? What are you, What are you going to do? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna be bulletproof. You gonna have to shoot me before I shoot you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so it's and if all of us, I mean, the whole, ain't none of I'm. He been shot on. I'm into everybody around. Me, I'm the save one. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, you know, so it's so it's like what you, all you gonna do is talk. And all of them have tried to negotiate to pay me off to Every keep you quiet. Every last one of them to keep you quiet. And it's not going. It, I didn't need. Did you ever? You talking it? about hell no? You talking about twenty five thousand dollars? And you making a million dollars? Did, did, but see, they didn't days. know it. And see, I, I didn't know. I it. kept a lot of that. Purposefully, I yeah. kept it quiet and just yeah. kept where well, you can see the camera, just that thing. It wasn't until I began to do reading things my way on my platform that showed my house, my car. Yeah. They said, Wait a minute, how did this happen? I'll tell you when I knew when, when you did that conference and spent damn near a quarter million dollars <laughs> just on like set design. I was like, How much is this nigga making? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, what I generate, I put back into you. Uh, you yeah. really do, yeah, absolutely. I got, I mean, yeah. you do it for the, for the people. Yeah. So, but the reality is. They're all punks. They talk, you know, and because they have de- they deal with church people, and church is a bubble, and it has its own brain yeah. and its own culture. So and, nobody ever tried. And hell no. And sadly to say, that it really keeps church people out of reality and what is really real. And yeah. so in their own world, and when I say I'm a part of the church, the spiritual church, but not the institution. What's you the know? spiritual church versus the institution? It's God. the true church. The institution is man made. Okay. It's man's idea to create, to give God glory, you know, and it's great and it's and it's it's plausible. Okay. But the reality is when you see that something becomes absolute shit. So you think in the in this current state, the church is Hell, absolute you shit. You can't tell. I mean, I see you when I see the kids. But I see it. No, no, no. It, I like I like I like I like Steve Furtick. I like what that I I like to see the multicultural I thing. I, can, I like Steve at yeah. first, but he, I don't like he for me, you I can't stand for I folk. love Bishop Bronner too. Oh Lord. He's a very nice man. His wife is extremely nice. Yeah. yeah. But my thing is, and I'm not saying I don't like Stephen. I'm just saying I have a thing with white pastors. It's just what it is. Really? White pastors with black members. I have a problem. You ra- is that <laughs> racist? It's like- not racist. I can't be racist because I I'm- am a minority. <laughs> Only people can be racist is a white person. You know, but but, but my you thing can be biased. is biased. I could be prejudiced, but I'm, prejudiced. I'm not even that. No, I'm just uh-huh. clear. Because if you are a white pastor mm-hmm. and you are not in the movement of social justice That's, and you do not have black people in your leadership, you are master. It's plain and simple. So what do we say about the white pastors who actually have black people in leadership? I thank God for them. That's great. 
but they still massive. But they need to they need to be sitting right beside you, yeah. and they need to be a part of the leadership. Don't 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 play with me. It needs to be a part of the real leadership. So give me an example of like what, in your opinion, the true church is, though. The true church. Like, is there the, like a church that you like? This pastor, this guy, this guy. Like true church. Oh yeah, represent. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there, there's some pastors that I absolutely love, and I like what they do. They are. I'm not gonna name them because they ain't paying me. <laughs> but. But I need to know what you think. Well, I can text, text you. Me. Text I can tell you. I can cool. text tell you. But no, they I'm not putting it out there like this. this you got a them. platform. I am not <laughs> giving you no free advertisement. See, that's that. the million dollars <laughs> in 45 days. He is a relentless business man, as you right, can see. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. no, no sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you pay me. I, I advertise. That's why I did for my spiritual father. He wasn't at the time. Bishop Bernard Jordan. He wasn't at the time. He it's just, everybody he touched, they win it. Was if they listen to him, who, he's who, a coach. Um, 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 millions, trillions, billions. Travis Muller. Hold on, that one, Bishop Jordan doing. That's my doing. Oh, that you was you. You asked Travis. Okay. Yes. Okay. I woke. Up, yeah. I woke up in the middle of the night. He was working at some church. I told him stop fooling them church folk with that money. Yeah. I said you more than that. Yeah. You're gonna. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I said you're gonna get. An opportunity, an idea. I forgot. He'll tell you if he tells the truth. Yeah. That's Larry Reed. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you touch a whole lot of different subjects. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't believe ain't nobody never tried to come for you too. I just I just knew you was gonna once. be like, it was just one guy. So Not do you go once. with like security? Do you walk around Listen, with security? They make me do it because okay. I sort of like fights. <laughs> what? So sometimes I sneak away by myself just to see what is see, gonna happen. Gonna go to Lennox <laughs> and let's go by myself. <laughs> Then where you at? I'm, I'm out here. You know, I, th that's that thing. I, I've been like that since I was a child. So how did you get so unbothered? So here's the thing. When I came from the hip hop world mm -hmm. and I came over here, it was like, not that I even was on business, but I was mm -hmm. looking for a pe place of refuge. Like I just needed a place of like, man, we finally all together with Jesus. But then I noticed that it was such a business and it was just as relentless when it came to the business as it was for me trying to get a number one record. Yeah. And so... It's almost like when you walk in the room and this pastor's there and you're starting to get this platform and you're starting to blow up, like you almost become a little bit more careful with how you present it. Like how did the unbothered Larry Reed birth, knowing mm. that you're a traditional pastor, like do you yeah. think it's because you're so financially free that you're able to do it or no. is that just your natural character? Good question. That came later, um, the, the that level of financial freedom. But it's it's a, been a part of my character, according to Ethelene Reed, my mama. She said Ethelene yeah, Reed, she don't she play. Said, yeah, she said I was always like that. Yeah. My daddy says I'm like his daddy, who was like that. Yeah. You know, so that's been a it has been a part of my character. So that plays a big part in it. Mm -hmm. My love for people is really what makes me fearless. I believe because it. I think people deserve the truth. They deserve to know the truth, and they deserve for you not to deal with them without any any airs. Mm -hmm. So when I come into those situations, and this happens a lot now because mm -hmm. I have to, to where I got to go where the preachers and the gospel artists are, who are all, all of them I love, but I mm -hmm. know what they think. You know, so I have to come into those arenas. They're people. So a lot, and most of them now, thankfully, they understand what I do. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to, to hear somebody's opinion about you because in the church, we don't really teach pastors and, and preachers and artists how to receive criticism. And what I do is basically... Did somebody teach you that or you just, just always had it internally? I I just I just always been like this. I mean, yeah, cause I see, I went to therapy. I got two speeds yeah. back before therapy. One and one hundred. <laughs> that's so. That's why I was so genuinely nice. Cause I know I'm. I used to tell. I used to tell my uh -huh. former wife, I'm gonna mess this up if he yeah. say the wrong thing. Cause I'm gonna come so genuine, <laughs> and I just know you're supposed yeah. to reciprocate my genuineness and mm -hmm. my love. And then if you like snarling at me, yeah. Now it's like, okay, my guy. Like we, yeah. you said what you said, yeah. but I've always really honored your bravery. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna start anything yeah. with, with you. Now somebody say, well, that's not true. Well, my thing is, my job is commentary. So if you yeah. get mad about my commentary, yeah. I guess you can say I'm, I'm starting it with you. But if you're going to come back at me for doing my job, especially when your job, most preachers, mm -hmm. is you in the pulpit going off on people all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so LGBTQ community yeah. and church. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm my ally. You are ally. Yeah. I never knew your stance or what yeah. have you. Why mm -hmm. an ally? 
and and what should what should people know about that community? Well, so this, here's the thing: I just started sharing this. Okay. I just started sharing it, that I was molested as a child, okay. and I had a choice by a man or woman. I, I was molested by both. Okay. And it just so happened I became hypersexual towards women. Which is the same energy. Yep. Like I was hypersexual towards women. And that's how I became this R&B guy and all this other stuff. But I know people who chose to be hypersexual towards the yeah, other way. Yeah. But then they all got to go to the same house. What does Larry yeah. Reed say about that? Well, about that, I don't think in every situation that you've been violated as a child has affects, makes you become this or that as relates to whether you're going to be same gender loving or not. Mm -hmm. I do think that it affects your behavior. Yeah. Whether you are same gender loving or not. I mm -hmm. do believe that because it affected me like that. What ended up happening, I chose pornography mm -hmm. as my go-to and it was terribly severe mm -hmm. to the point to where, and I, oh, I can say it regularly here, right? That's yeah. what you said now. Yeah, no, do okay. you. We good. No worries. As long as I could bust the nut. Uh -huh and consistently come, I didn't really need to eat. You didn't so, need to eat? No. So I was yeah, already nigga, you had a problem. <laughs> nigga, you had a problem. I, was like, <laughs> I didn't know. I'm just saying, hell. I'm just, I'm judge. I'm a judge. I'm a judge. I'm just like, Because you tell me be real, then I tell you my testimony. No, I just thought about this nigga said he didn't couldn't eat. Like, I at least went to go out to eat. No. Oh, so you were better than me. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I love you. I love you, but I didn't hear. I've never heard this, that he didn't go eat. Go ahead. I love you. Go, go bro. Go. I ain't going to tell my No, finish, I'm finish. I promise. I just had to put that joke. <laughs> I was, it hit me low. I was like, you didn't eat no food? Okay. Did you say this? <laughs> nigga didn't eat no food. I'm like, what did he just say? He didn't eat no but food? Well, if my soul was weak, okay, I would go ahead, clam man, up and I'd tell my but, truth. But it, it, it felt, you, 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 you were able to I just had feel nuts. your appetite. It, 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 maybe you ain't had no good nut. Have you ever had a good nut? Of course. Uh-uh. If you had a good note, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm still going to be hungry afterwards, praise <laughs> be to God, because I eat. I got to feed these muscles at some point. A, a glass of water or something, a shakeology. But no, no, no but but please but please tell the story. Okay, so so I will always say, to, and he was, I mentored him for years, I will say that I was a sex addict because I, I, if you can replace, that thing can replace what mm -hmm. should be a natural behavior, then you probably got a, a little bit of a problem. Yeah. And so that went on for a while. I don't think that the church is a safe place for addicts. I don't. I don't think it's a safe place for women. Yeah. And I don't think it's a safe place for same gender loving people. Yeah. I'm not saying all churches, yeah. but I'm speaking generally. Mm -hmm. I don't. If I say trust the church that has in its leadership the gender that represents you, I say, trust the church that has the race and the leadership that represents you. Mm -hmm. I say, um, trust, those are safe havens for you. But mm -hmm. then generally, women, same gender loving, church is not a safe place for, for you. And when you say that's safe, what's, what's not safe about it? It's not equipped. And in our religion, Christianity that we practice here in the West, mm -hmm. not how religion and Christianity was practiced in Africa is totally different. Mm -hmm. But how, not Africa now, colonized Africa, mm -hmm. but Africa, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 Ethiopia, that. which is the oldest complete Same. Bible that we have, 800 yeah. years predates it's the King James Version. Yeah, you know. And they drink, and they, you can read it with coffee. I love coffee <laughs> right. over there. I love right, coffee. you know, but the way we practice it here, it just is set up for, for white people. And black and black, and black people, you know, we yeah. we we sh we shout and we buck, you know, with our African selves yeah. in it. But our theology is not set for the disenfranchised. It's not set for those that are in pain, in need mm -hmm. of a savior that um, does not have any biases himself. Right. Yeah. What type of church will Larry go to? Mine. And which kind of church is that? More love you more podcast after this. Although years had passed, I would often think about my biological mother. Well, how did you think that being adopted and never having met your biological parents that you was okay? Like, what did she look like? What was her name? Did she ever think of me? I opened the birth certificate and I, you know, I, I get it. And I look at the name for the child and I realize that I did not have a name. Although she 
she had refused to meet me, I wondered those things. But in 2019, I received word from the adoption agency through an email that my biological mom was dead. For most of us, we get a funeral as a point of closure for our loved ones. Even if he had feelings and wanted to know uh, about himself and get more meaning to himself and put together some pieces of the puzzle of his life that he was not able to put together, that may never happen. A popular St. Louis rapper dies in an overnight shooting. It happened in Kinlock. She put me up for adoption. She refused to meet me, and then she died. After he told me her name, I got really curious. She called me and she was just like, I think I found the person who could possibly be your brother. I needed to meet him. Then she added a caveat. She said she's not dead. Your grandma was dead, but your mom. But my mom wasn't dead. Do me a favor. Log on to loveyoumore.com. Partner with us for your chance to watch the new movie, The Missing Piece. And of course, I'm in that community every single day. All you got to do is click that little link that says partner. And uh, a portion of the proceed is going to go to the Will Flow Foundation, where we create educational content centered around adoption and foster care. Now, that other little piece of the money um, that you'll be given goes to a black family. Mine. Praise the Lord. Flat out. Go to loveyoumore.com right now. Love you more, love you more, love you more. Now back to the Love You More podcast. What type of church will Larry go to? Mine. And which kind of church is that? It is Reformation Church of Atlanta. <laughs> so, so, is, so, so is that a church that speaks to male, female, Hell transgender? Yeah. And, and yes, in my leadership, I had, <laughs> my head intercessor is a lesbian and will pray all of your women preachers you can ever think of up on the table. So the sexuality, so so sexuality cannot block what God is doing. Hell no. What can block what God is doing is sin. Mm -hmm. Now see, so is, so is that so some can is no, that no, sin? No, no, no. It can be for some. Okay. See, sin, this is what I teach. <clears throat> sin is irrational thinking. Number one. Okay. Number two, sin is anything that harms you. Number three, sin is anything that harms anybody else. And fourthly, and probably the most important, sin is anything that is less than what is God's will of good for you. So all that list of drinking, smoking, all that made up by white folk, that ain't it. Well, and this, the prophet <laughs> said we can have some. No, I'm just playing. Go ahead. And I'm like, well, but this out. is the reason why there's so much sin in the church, because they do not understand what sin is. Sin mm -hmm. is a separator from God who is good. So if it separates you from God that is good, then that is that is what sin is, mm -hmm. you know? And if it harms somebody else, that just wipes out half of the church because we're the most harmful people with our gospel. <laughs> you, know? you know, so those are the things that I teach and that people have ascribed to who couldn't live right in regular church and come over to my church where it's so free and they live better lives and make better choices for their health, their body, sexually. They're not out here being promiscuous and all those things. But we don't, we doing that in the church. Yeah. Yeah. So is that the Larry Reed Live community? Yes. The, the online stuff. See, that you Larry Reed Live is a um, fishing pole. To and bring people in. Yes. It's okay. my it's my lead generator. Okay. You know, and always has been. Because remember, I say every entrepreneur needs to know partnership. partnership. Yeah. yeah. So I've I've done that since the show A million dollars, forty five days, yeah. all the time. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> so so now, you've made a substantial amount of money. You got a really dope footprint. You know you can't really bring up any vlogger. You got the Shea Room. You got Tasha K. And now you got like, it's always unique to me. They'd be like Larry Reed. And I'd be like, and I just listen, you know, I just listen because I get it. I'm privy to these type of conversations mm -hmm. because of the radio platform. I yeah. get an opportunity to hear how powerful the platform yeah. has become. You finally got an opportunity to put pen to pad and write a book. Yeah. What's in this book 
and what type of people are really going to connect to this book? Because I know when you sell, you gonna if it's ten thousand to be a New York Times bestseller, yeah, he just gonna click a button. But you know, let, let me tell you, I, I like shaking up systems because I've done this with gospel music. Cause them niggas won't let me in. So what I did, <laughs> I fired in. all y'all hoes. You know who you are. I fired y'all, <laughs> and then I promoted my own stuff to yeah. the top of the billboard. Yeah. You know, so I I may not even like the last projects I released, I didn't even register them properly and put them through all the channels to, to end up there at the Stella Awards. Yeah. I didn't do all that. I don't want to kiss no ass. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to play no game. Is Larry scarred from all that or are you just who you are? Um, no, I'm not scarred from I'm very aware. <laughs> very aware. <laughs> so I I often tell other art like yourself, you don't need that. Yeah. Um, people who must I've had? I've had Yolanda. I've had everybody yeah. in y'all. I have everybody on yeah, my platform. Everybody. Yeah. Y'all don't need any of that. You have social media. <laughs> That's it. And you're a brand. Yeah. You do not need any of that. I was just on the BET show. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you just lock in to what it is that you know you're supposed to be doing, yeah. and then you make partnership and people your priority. Partnership with people. That's it. I mean, because people are going to put you where you need to get. Yeah. Yeah. And so everything that I do is for the for the betterment of people, beginning with laughter and then a little learning I drop in there. And those people that catch those seeds of learning, yeah. they left Larry Live and met me in Patreon. And then in Patreon, I had to start Reformation Church of Atlanta. Yeah. So are you so is the book going to kind of share your journey or is these Just, are these different stories? Glad you asked. The book, what it's going to do, it's called Church Critic, <clears throat> because I want people to be very clear on, and which is poured out in our conversation, I'm very passionate about the reformation of the, of the church. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of trying to get them to think Larry Live, think Church Critic. And what I do and have done right in front of everybody's face without them knowing it, is choosing the stories that were public that will make me have a conversation. There are three Atlanta pastors that is in Atlanta, mega church pastors, and all three of them are hiding children. They're sending money. They're hiding children? Yes, they're sending money to the baby mamas, but they don't speak to them. So they're fatherless. They have bastards, but they're spiritual fathers. You know, there's some bullshit. And did, are these the pastors who offer to give you $25,000 to be quiet? Are you going to reveal who they are Hell in the Hell yeah. Book? No, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do that? They know who they are. We've talked. <laughs> oh, they've called. That, yeah, they, they know okay. who they are. They in the book, but I don't name them. I don't name them in the book. Why but do I, you keep them silent if you if you feel so passionate about because the what they're not doing? Because the fatherlessness is what's important. Them niggas ain't that important. <laughs> what's, 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 in, what's important? <laughs> what's important is that you are you a whole pastor and nothing in you feel like that you should be taking care of your black son or your black daughter. Yeah. I can't respect you ever at all. They know I do not speak unless I know it's the truth. Yeah. So if I've seen the DNA report, oh, what you, you, you going to tell so me? So who sends you this stuff? There are LRLers everywhere, even in the White House. I get information I'm not supposed to get. Even in the White House? <laughs> even in the White House and with the IRS and with FBI. That's it. So partnership. That's, that's where partnership. So, so if I'm sitting in front of that camera, Everybody feels like I'm their best friend or their uncle or something. Yeah. So they trust me. And, and and they trust me more when they know they tell me stuff and I don't tell it. It never comes to my show, you know, and I, or I wait till it becomes public. And then I may not even tell all of that. I tell a piece to protect those that have shared with me. So I don't listen. I have been in the courtroom and they trying to make me tell my source and I and the judge won't make me tell it. So, what, so it's still I'm, a level of character and integrity. Hell yeah. I'm an integral person. I have a lot of character, you know, yeah. so I'm not going to operate any kind of funny back door kind of way. If I tell you I'm not telling nobody, I'm not going to tell nobody because yeah. I just don't operate like that. I want to have the conversation. Yeah. So that's the reason why me putting these pastors' name out is mm -hmm. not important. The story about fatherlessness and then you still pastoring. Being a spiritual father. That's the conversation that I want to have. And so the book is going to let people know, oh, hold on. We've been laughing and, and cutting up and shot at what he's saying, but he has been strategically doing every last one of these shows. And so I'm going to tell it. And right. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about fatherlessness, the percentages, women that are, you know, there's like a whole sex ring in the church. No, I don't know nothing about that, man. You know, I come from the neighborhood, man. I can't believe nothing you saying. 
God, Y'all dog, believe that? I don't believe you that. You done turned my stomach. You lying. No, you I promise lie. I didn't know no sex For real? ring. Never. Okay, I was in, no, I was I was out one time and it was like I you know because I you know I wear my stuff the way I wear my stuff and I remember mm. one time and when I was with my ex and I was uh and somebody said something a little out the way and I just looked him in the face and I said don't nobody ever try me like that champ and and then she was like this and and it was like and then I had to put my face back on because I was like wait a minute I'm over here now so I need to kind of keep it cool and I think from that moment on it's like the word kind of got out that like I could be a little yeah. intense because this yeah. was like I don't think people realize like Jesus would Jesus is mm -hmm. like I really came here for him like I didn't come to is that white Jesus I hope it's like, not <laughs> shut up <laughs> it can't, it can't be white Jesus. Did you see how deep I was about to go? I, ain't God, want, I just oh, can't with white this Jesus. This man won't let nobody get that. I, I was My about Jesus to cry. This rolls. is a good podcast moment. I was going to okay. cry. Well, go ahead. I just, no, go ahead. No, hell, you My Jesus is black. He wears cornrows over, the, over here in my Christianity. When your book come out? <laughs> What when your book coming out? And, and I don't know when you're watching this, but his book probably out now. And it's called Church Critic. This is another alias from Larry Live. Hey Larry, Keisha Mims from my Patreon community. She's from Duval County. She sent a message. She says, How does he find out all his information? The women always come to me. Yeah. They always come to me. But hell, they know I know. These pastors, they know I'm I'm talking about it here. When they watch this. That you don't have to be scared, Pastor. I'm not going to tell nobody publicly who you is. I will privately. But I'm not going to tell nobody publicly who you are. I don't think that's important. What's most important is getting you to change your darn way. But what I'm saying is you need to be in that child's life. Wow. That's what you need. Because that child is living without validation, affirmation from the father. Yeah. The parent is the first face of God a child sees. So when you fuck up, as a parent, you fuck up their God concept and their concept of self. So how are you going to be in the business of ministering and not being a minister to your seed? You have betrayed your seed. Mm. And you're dead wrong. And I don't know why these prophets come into y'all church and prophesy over y'all. Damn the prophets I come from. The prophets I come from, we hate to see them come in the church and we scared. Because they're, they're going to call they're it like, out. And start doing that stuff in service. Like, oh, somebody, somebody about to die. Somebody <laughs> sin. Because they're not giving the massage, the massage work. Yeah, they're getting money. They're raising money. I say, I don't have to play any of those games anymore. I'm so thankful. That's got to be really dope in ministry. Because yeah. you know, I've made money from music and other yeah. things. But for you to just be so free yeah. in this, I think people got a better understanding of why you are who you are. Mm -hmm. I think people really understand how necessary mm -hmm. it is. Yo, that's I think that's word. what I discovered when I came. I was like, oh, he necessary. That's a great word. That's just fun. You know, like, you got a lot of fun and games. And, I'm, you know, this is the podcast. We're going to keep it real. Like, I'll be like, man, nigga, that was messy. That was crazy. But mm -hmm. I've literally seen some people that you can destroy and or at least share the truth. Mm -hmm. And even now, just like, no. Like, I really want to highlight that point mm -hmm. because when I was just in the barbershop and I was telling some of the people that we're going to have on the show, and I was like, you heard of Larry Reed? And the barber said, that's every, his dad, the <laughs> pastor. That's every pastor worst nightmare right there. <laughs> That nigga going to tell it. <laughs> he said, that nigga going to tell it. Uh, and I was like, uh, okay. Uh, but he's going to be on that. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm like, I want people to yeah. really know like how he started and mm -hmm. sitting in the bedroom with no bed and yeah. like, you know, writing all this stuff on the wall, Man. putting all this stuff on the wall and really watching mm -hmm. the hand of the Lord move the way it is. But more love you more podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com.
Love you more, love you more, love you more. Now back to the Love You More podcast. I feel like I live by something. What you want to talk about? Like whatever else you want to give, just give. I see they they was blinking me like a comedian. It's all right. It's no, fine. What else? I don't know. It sounded like there was some. Sounded like I left something out. Well, I didn't finish saying something. But anyway, we can have another conversation another nah, time. No, no, like um. You touched that. You got the entrepreneur stuff. I wanted them to see how you how you came in. Um, you talked a little bit about divorce. Yeah. You said, could you keep it real? You did. <laughs> you didn't tell on the pastors. You wasn't no snitch. At least you wasn't no snitch. He didn't snitch. He didn't snitch. So that's a uh, tell. Uh, you got an actual book release well, you know, date? I'm going to release it to my partners first. See? The yeah. word partners. KD, yeah. did you hear what he uh, said? Uh, we got to get us some uh, partners. He said he made a million dollars in 45 days multiple times. Yeah, it did happen. And I, to God be the glory. Come on, and, do the church thing. And you pat your own self exactly. on the back too. He yeah, because the, the two go together. Okay, so, so uh, that's right. Don't do one or the other. It's weird. Yeah. Come on, to God be the glory. Well, nigga, ain't it you singing? And, and that's that what don't he make did no to me. Sense. That he did to me when I went just saying, like every time, like, cause you're doing, he said some good stuff. Like, to God, you remember you glory. said it on my show. Yeah, I like, said, why you say that? Boy? Why you keep on giving God the glory? I said, this is not the Christian show. I thought it was. <laughs> Pastor. I said, you the one did You the one did it. No, no, no. The Lord. No, no, no. The good Lord. But no, when, like, what's the book? Like, to mm. those of you who, who are just kind of, you know, following mm. from other things, how do they find you on social media? How do they connect with you? Thankfully, you just type in Larry Live anywhere. Yeah. And that's on Twitter, IG, Facebook, YouTube. We air simultaneously on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So IG only get clips, but you can follow me on IG and I put some clips up there from the from the main long form shows. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Indeed. So so family listen, Love You More Love You More podcast essentially is an opportunity for you to get a bird's eye view with people that you see, people who are making influence in the world, people who are making inf- impact in the world, and ultimately seeing people who actually love themselves. Here's yeah. the thing. I hear from women all the time because of my children, I lost myself because of my marriage I lost myself because of my weight. I lost myself. Whatever that thing may be, I want you to understand that there's something so beautiful and special on the inside of you that you have to learn to love. To be honest, before we got on here, I was telling my guy Dave, I was like, man, make sure I ain't looking too, too frumpy. And KD said, man, I remember looking like that and had the same issue. Now I got this. And it was like an aha moment for me. That moments quickly become memories. And if you don't enjoy the moment, you won't enjoy the memory. Yeah. So make sure you enjoy every moment. And learn to love you more. Let out. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more.